Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. And this is Argentina part two. This is the second part of a three part series on Argentina. The first part was an introduction and about altitude. This is on Malek and Mendoza. And then the third part will be on Salta and Torrontes. And that will only be available to members only of the e-learning portal at winewithjimmy.com. Um, this is going to be looking at the Mendoza area in detail for level three. I'm talking about Malbec, and then we'll go through a working written question. So you are um, going to be aware of the kind of questions they may ask you in the examination and what they look like, and then how you will have confidence to answer them to give you the top scores in your examination. Okay, so let's go through this. The social media is all at the bottom. If you're that way inclined, you can get in touch via Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, at Wine with Jimmy is the bottom left. That is me. Okay, let's rock and roll. So here is Argentina. You would have seen this map before when we looked at part one. Um, we went through in part one San Juan, La Rioja, Patagonia, and um, we mentioned Salta and Mendoza. This time we, of course, are going to really focus on Mendoza because it is our key region of uh, today. It's all about Mendoza and it's very likely if, if there is a written question on Argentina, Mendoza will feature in it because it is the largest part of Argentina's production. So it is the biggest producing area by quite a long way. It is actually about 75% of the total production of Argentina, so it's quite significant. Um, there are many parts to Mendoza, but they really want you to understand about Luján de Cuyo, the Maipú, and Uco Valley. And we're going to look at those in greater detail um, coming up now. So let's go into that in a, in a greater detail. Here is the Mendoza area. Let's just get some whereabouts so you're okay with where we're looking at. As you can see, that is Mendoza City, just sitting there. Okay, so that is, uh, you know, you've got the famous Ruta 40, which runs through Mendoza, going from north to south. Uh, so the big main road of the area. And it is all this reddish shaded area is, in fact, the Mendoza wine region, which stretches from the northern section, pretty much where that number 12 is, down to San Rafael, where that number 21 is at that bottom area. Um, you won't need to know about those so much, but they, they, we have identified here the north and east area. So that's north of Mendoza City and then east of Mendoza City around San Martin, Santa Rosa, these kind of areas. You can see the altitude here is actually in feet, um, but it's not that high. That's probably about something like 600, 700 uh, meters in total. Um, vineyards around these areas in the north and east are in kind of like desert-like conditions. They are protected from the rain by the Andes, and I put the Andes in big triangles on the left-hand side there. That's very identifiable for you, and you will know that's the case. So the Andes, let's pop that down just there. So you're very aware of, uh, of that. Um, and uh, this area, the north and east, is where really the, mostly the volume comes from. So inexpensive um, Malbecs will be produced in this area at the lower altitudes. Um, these make juicy, jammy, soft tannin, soft sweet tannin, and then quite soft acidity concentrated reds. They are, um, they are kind of crowd pleasers and one of the most uh, widely accepted and adored international styles today. Um, hailing from this area, of course. Um, the Mendoza River runs through this area as well. Uh, you'll see um, it's a little bit harder to identify, so I'll scribble it in for you. I think I need to do uh, draw. Here we go. Uh, it comes down here, as you can see, and runs down into there. So um, that goes through this region and offers a source of um, irrigation to the area of the north and the east. So that's another reason why you can get quite significant volumes from that area. So let's get into the real important bits, which they are likely to ask you about. So nestled just to the sort of um, uh, west and the southwest of Mendoza City is a place called the Luján de Cuyo. Um, 
this is a very sort of famous place with lots of history. Um, some very old vine Malbec here, some very fine concentrated old vine Malbec. And the vineyards, as you can see, as you head west, you go in towards the Andes mountain range. So we have more altitude here. So in the north and the east, you're looking at sort of six, seven hundred meters of altitude. Here you're at around 900 to 1100. And this is where you'll get a longer growing season, possibly, possibly producing more tannic structure because the tannins ripen later. They're a little bit cooler because of the altitude, so there's a bit more acidity. And the wines have a bit more of a purity and concentration to them, um, specifically from the old vine Malbec that's found here. To the sort of south of Mendoza is the Maipu area. And this Maipu area, uh, this zone is um, sort of lower in altitude than the Luján de Cuyo. Um, and where the lowest parts are found, and that's certainly just immediately to the south of Mendoza, um, you will find at 600 meters, this is actually another area of some inexpensive production and most volume export Malbec comes from. So if you've been into a local supermarket and picked up a £5.99 uh, Mendoza Malbec or a 10 buck Mendoza Malbec, it's probably going to come from the Maipu area blended with some of the north and easterly parts of Mendoza. Um, the higher sites, which is going towards the west and near the Luján de Cuyo, is where we will actually have some very interesting Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, Tempranillo and Bonada being produced in the Maipu area. And then we come down to this area on the, on the map, it's kind of like 18, 19, 20. Um, but this is what we call the Uco Valley. So this is to the south of Mendoza, but much more into the Andes mountain range. Um, and this therefore ranges from around 900 meters up to 1500 meters, certainly up to where Tupungato is. That's some of the highest altitude, uh, as you can see, number 18 up in this uh, up in this area. So we are looking at quite significant uh, um, altitudes uh, in this area. That means you're going to have possible more tannic structure, more brightness of acidity and good concentration and a bit of a, a sort of a, a, a floral primary edge to the wines as well. Uh, so that is your um, Uko. Um, they have cold nights here as well. Um, and some of the sites within the Uko Valley, certainly in the Tupungato area, are cold enough to grow Pinot Noir. Um, certainly some of the most, I'd probably say, European style red wine is produced in this area. It's a real wonderful area for very, very good Malbec uh, in, the Uko, in the Uko Valley. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at a video. I think I have this ready to go, but knowing me, I don't. I do. Yay. So let's just have a look at Mendoza and those subregions so you get an idea of what it looks like. Um, so here, of course, is Argentina. Um, we're not going to go through the regions north to south. We're just going to focus on Mendoza, which produces 75% of the production. We've highlighted a few places here. It's a little bit sketchy, but uh, this is the Mendoza city. And then you'll see the Maipu area is what we have just in the foreground here. So Maipu, remember having um, a fairly decent production, certainly at the higher altitudes, which goes to the Andes, but then there's also some bulk production in the Maipu. Sorry about the quality. It's a little bit sketchy. It's catching up now though. Um, then we have the Luján de Cuyo. Uh, so this is a little bit more into the mountains. Remember, up to around 1,100 meters of altitude. Uh, and here there are some very famous old vine Malbec. So you can get some rather structured and concentrated is Luján Cuyo area. Then we're going to take a little bit of a spin down to the Uco. And as you can see, it's further south. Um, and then we're into those kind of mountain ranges. Look, it's a little bit greener in the look as well. And that's really because of the cooler conditions here. So it has a greener shade to it. Remember, the Uco Valley is famous for that more altitude, the lowest altitude being 900 and the highest going up to around 1500 meters as you head to the Tapangato, which we'll have a look at in a second. So yes, higher altitude, much more concentrated Malbecs, often blended with Cabernet Sauvignons. Um, let's have a look. Yes, we are going just to the north. There you go. Even greener 
around that Tupungato area and at even more higher altitude. It's a wonderful collection of vineyards here making some, look at the altitude there, wonderful, real um, complex wines. Some of the best of the Malbecs of the whole of Argentina come from this area. There you go, wonderful. Okay, so let's talk about the grape variety um, that we've mentioned a few times here, the very, very key Malbec grape variety. Argentina really holds a very important claim, and that claim is that it has the largest plantings of Malbec in the world. Malbec was a grape variety from the southwest of France. It was cultivated in huge volumes, but a big, big winter freeze in 1956 damaged and majorly destroyed most of the Malbec. So people down in the southwest of France decided to replant with vines that survived the winter, like Merlot, for instance. So Malbec was seriously diminished in France under the 56 freeze. Um, but it had, of course, spread its wings and gone to other places like Argentina, where it's thrived. Malbec loves the conditions, it loves the heat, it loves the dry conditions, and there are no winter freezes here. So it's really done significantly well. Um, good fleshy purpley skins give nice deep purple color, full bodied and often smooth tannins. Certainly at lower altitudes, they're sweet and smooth. But at high altitudes, Malbec, like Tupungato, Uco Valley, you can get quite grippy tannins, a little bit like European, due to the longer growing season where they can ripen them a little bit longer. Um, Malbec is normally a varietal because it's so successfully internationally on the export market. We find a lot of it as a single varietal, um, but it can be blended as well to produce more Argentine Bordeaux blends, therefore blended with Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, some very good varietal Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot, there's some very good varietal Petit Verdot out there as well. So you will find the blends in place. Um, at lower altitudes, we've mentioned this, it tends to be fuller bodied because it's juicy and jammy. It tends to be quite alcoholic, with rich jammy black fruit and sometimes reddish jammy characteristics as well. Higher altitude will have higher acidities and potentials for higher tannins when they pick them later. More elegance, freshness and floral notes. There's overall more complexity and more harmony behind a higher altitude Malbec. And the higher altitudes, once again, something like the Uco Valley or Tupangato or something like the higher parts of Lujan de Cuyo or the Maipu, the higher bits of Maipu. The lower altitudes are around Mendoza City, the north and east, and the lower parts of the Maipu zone. Typical characteristics of Malbec tend to be rich and dark. I mean, the color is very inky and black and purpley. You'll find the fruits are blueberry, blackberry, black plum sort of characteristic. Some good spices to it as well, black pepper, licorice, and often things like chocolate and oakiness you'll find in them as well. You could put jam in that picture as well for Malbec. Let's go through a written question then. So you are well aware of uh, um, how to answer the questions or what to sort of expect. You are a winemaker looking to source some high quality Malbec in Mendoza. Name two parts of Mendoza you would source your fruit from. So many people are surprised by this because I know we've gone through it in this section, but many people won't um, expect a question as in depth with this with their theory part of their examination. It can come up um, and you may see this and often students that haven't revised it or haven't bothered because they don't think it would come up are obviously very, very surprised by this and score lowly. So let's look at see how we answer this. Of course, we're looking at the Uco Valley. You could put Tupangato, you could put Lujan de Cuyo as well, or higher parts of the Maipu zone. Um, but I would stick with those two. Try not to overcomplicate your um, revision because of course, you've got lots to remember. Why would the grapes from these regions produce fresher wines than elsewhere? This is for you to understand the geography and the topography that we looked in detail at. Um, due to the altitude of the vineyards, because of course they are moving into the Andes and it says there they are found 
in the foothills of the Andes Mountains from around 900 to 1500 meters of altitude. That will cover both of those. Luján de Cuyo is up to around 1100 meters, but the Uco Valley with Tupangato is up to about 1500 meters. This increases the elegance, freshness and acidity of the wines um, due to that higher altitude, the cooler conditions, um, the very lovely cool evenings that they will find in the region. Okay, so that really is uh, the end of this section, I believe. Um, a, a smaller part, but really focusing on an area which typically arises if an Argentina question comes up. Mendoza, Mendoza, Mendoza. Very typical part of the examiners um, where they want you to understand. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I do hope that you've enjoyed the video and you've enjoyed learning about the wines, the red wines of Argentina, specifically Malbec. Um, if you have any concerns, comments or questions, please do get in touch with me either by putting the question or comment in the comment section below this video on YouTube um, or getting in touch with me at Wine with Jimmy on things like Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. Um, the other handles up there are my two wine schools, West London Wine School, South London Wine School here in London. Also my wine bar, Streatham Wine House, based here in South London as well. Next time you are in London, please come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. My name's been Jimmy Smith of the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you so much for your time. Goodbye.